Welcome to the video. I recently bought this tool holder um, from PB Tools for the Multifix size A uh, tool post. This is used for either holding a, a boring bar or um, a drill chuck, um, which is what I've got here. This arrangement here uh, comprises of the tool holder and also a sleeve, which this one has a Morse taper number two taper in it. Um, and then this plain uh, shank diameter fits into the tool holder and then it's clamped up and that enables me to mount my drill chuck onto the tool post. But just a very quick overview of the tool holder. Um, it's the usual kind of quality from PB tools. Um, it's very good. Um, it fits the, the tool post really well and uh, the finish is nice. Um, it came well packaged. Uh, well greased, I've degreased it, um, especially in the bore and on the the uh, the shank of the um, sleeve to make sure that I've got a good uh, fit in here and it's not um, lubricated, so it's got a good firm grip. Everything feels good. The uh, these clamping screws feel good. The threads are clean, um, and yep, yeah, the the height adjuster screw and lock nuts. They they all um, they fit really nicely, um, and um, yeah, as I say, it's the usual high quality product. Uh, it does say on the um, on the the packing slip that these things are made in China, but you know some some things that come from China are pretty crap. Let's be honest, um, but these are very good, and you know let's face it, iPhones are made in China, so China doesn't necessarily have to mean poor quality products. So the way this thing goes together, or, or perhaps if I just explain this um, this sleeve, um, so as you'd expect with a with a, um, a Morse taper sleeve, uh, there is this slot milled into here, which enables you to um, break the contact of the taper um, with a, a drift, uh, but it also has this screw in the back here. So if need be, you can just tighten the screw, and then that pushes on the back of the um, of the taper that's fitting in here just to eject it. Uh, so that's a nice touch. And um, on the tool holder itself, um, it has uh, these two clamping screws and um, the sleeve is a, is a tight fit in there as it is. So this middle screw can be used as a, a jacking screw. So we give that half a turn and then that fits in there much more easily. So then uh, once it's in, just release that screw. And then these uh, screws here, these are, must be M8 because they fit a, a 13 millimeter spanner. There we go, so they're just nipped. And uh, that's loose, so I'll just nip that just so it doesn't vibrate loose and come flying out when it's on the machine. And so there it is. There's the holder with the, uh, the taper sleeve attached into it. And then this is my drill chuck. So normally this drill chuck attaches into the tailstock um, and when I give a demonstration on the machine, I'll explain some of the reasons why I'm going to this system. Uh, it won't be for everything, um, but uh, I'll, I'll explain the reasons in a minute. So this then, so I just want to make sure that the the uh, the taper on the arbor is clean. And I've already cleaned this out, but just to be just to be sure, there we go. And then. Um, these can just fit together. Right, so that's in there nice and positively, and that's what it looks like when it's all together. Okay, so I'll cut here, I'll put it on the machine, show you what it looks like and how it works. Okay, so here we are at the machine. 
So I've got the tool post already rotated at this position and I've set this already for centre height. So there we go. So that's how it looks when it's on the machine. And of course, it needs positioning along the uh, X axis and it would also need positioning for centre height. I've already set it, as I've mentioned on a previous video, I've, I've set up um, a tool library in my DRO. So what I'm able to do with that is, um, is to wind this into the zero position on the machine and then, um, then I'm ready to go really. So <clears throat> the reason for doing this, I, I was toying with the idea about, about making this change. Um, well, it's not really a change, it's just an addition and it's another option because I, I don't have to use this for drilling. I'm not, I'm not locked into this option and nothing else. I can still use the uh, tailstock. Um, but the reason I wanted to do this was um, I was toying with the idea of fitting um, uh, a third axis onto here, which um, which I could link up to my DRO. But having priced them up, the readers are very expensive for Newell. Um, and then I'd have to faff about fitting it and it's another potential thing to catch and get broken. The encoders, sorry, the, the scales on these uh, DROs are, are quite delicate. They're carbon fiber, carbon fiber uh, cladded rods. And um, I just hate to have another potential thing that, that could get broken on the machine. So as you can see, this is a quick release chuck, so it's easy to change over. I don't have to faff about with the chuck key like I would with one of these. Um, but I tend to only use these for a fixed purpose anyway. So I, I bought this drill chuck only to use for chamfering. Um, it was about 15 quid or 20 quid. It might sound a bit extravagant and a bit lazy, but you know, I just, like the idea of being able to reach up, grab my countersink and stick it into the tailstock. And that's how I was using things. And the tailstock does have the divisions on, on the quill, but, uh, but this means that I can use the Z axis on the DRO um, and accurately drill to a, um, a known depth. The other thing that's made um, convenient with this type of setup is the fact that um, I have the solid tool post mount on, on this machine. Um, so this is something that, that I made for this machine um, oh, about 18 months ago. And it replaces the compound slide. Um, as I've mentioned previously on other videos, the compound slide presents two main uh, challenges. One is that it introduces two degrees of freedom. One's a rotational rotational degree of freedom. The other one is a linear degree of freedom. And um, it adds a level of error potentially to uh, to the setup. And it's not really conducive to be used with um, a, a DRO like the way I am. And uh, as I've mentioned on a previous video, if you, if you, if you uh, haven't seen it, uh, check out the video that talks about the, the tool library in the DRO. Um, I have all my tools numbered and this this tool has been assigned a number, so it's tool number seven. Um, I haven't labelled it up yet, but I know it's tool number seven. And what that means is that I all I need to do is select tool seven in the DRO and then wind the x-axis into zero. And I know that the axis of the drill chuck is in line with the axis of the spindle. So that's really convenient. And then the other the other thing with the compound slide is um, it it doesn't offer the same level of stiffness as this kind of setup does, and so um, I'll only be using this arrangement with the tool post in this orientation. I'll never be using it in any of the um, uh, other angular positions that the multi-fix tool post offers. Um, so it will only ever be in this configuration and um, 
and so I know that the tool post is square because I've set it up that way and I've drilled and pinned it um, so it, it can't move. Um, so this offers a very rigid and accurate way to do this job. Um, the other benefit of having it this way, of course, is that um, I can use the longitudinal feed on the carriage to uh, to advance the drill through the work. And that offers a more consistent rate of drilling than if I was drilling by hand. So that's a bit of an overview of, of why I've set it up this way, why I'm um, using this option. So what we'll do next is set up on the machine and do a quick demonstration. Okay, so I'll give a quick demonstration now of how um, how I set up my drill chuck um, on the tool post uh, in the tool library. And I mentioned before, I think that I assigned tool number seven to this. So I've got the piece of uh, gash aluminium in the chuck. So I'll face off, turn the OD just to true it up, and then um, and then we'll go from there. Right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the drill chuck into the tool post. So this is barely just in shot now on, on the GoPro. Okay, so if this was the first time setting up, um, what would need to be done now is to set the height and also the position in the x-axis. So let's select tool number seven because that's what this one is now. Um, <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a center drill into the into the drill chuck. Oh, that's not tight. Tighten it up will help. There we go. Okay, so that's nice and solid. Um, what I'm going to do now, because the workpiece is only aluminium, so it's nice and soft. Let me um, move the camera a little bit closer so we can see a bit more detail about what's going on here now. Okay, so what I'm going to do is scratch the workpiece and what I'm looking for is for the the line that I scribe now to be um, coincident with the machining marks that I've just produced by facing it off. So I'll come back the other way. So I made a little cross on the workpiece now. I'm going to get in there and have a look, eyeball it. How does that look? So to do this properly, it's very difficult with the camera in the way, but um, what I really need to do is get in there and eyeball it. Um, okay, but I can do that a number of times, but I've already set this, so I know the height is good. Um, so that's So that's okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring, now, now that I've got a convenient little crosshair there, I'm going to bring the tip of the drill chuck in line with that cross, which is about there. So 
so there might be a little bit of accenter error um, let's try dr drilling a hole at that okay so I'm not worried about the Z position at this point but the X position I want to now set to zero okay so we've got the X position um, set up there now so I'm going to swap out for another drill oh actually let me um, let me drill that hole and, and with the uh, center drill properly and this time let's, um, we're using automatic feed feed engage there it is so there's that whole sensor drill um, done So this is a 5.5 mil drill. Um, I just picked it up at random, really. There's no re no particular reason why I selected this drill size. Let's start the machine back up. So now, um, let's see. So what I can do now in the Z axis, I can set that to zero. And I don't know, we'll drill to a depth of 10 millimeters. So I'll engage the feed. So it's nicely working. We'll probably do with some lead. And there we go, there's 10 millimeter hole depth. And that was all quite easy. The um, the finish in the hole is pretty good. I can see in there it's difficult to uh, to capture on on film, but it is looking really good. Better than if I drilled it by hand, I think. Um, so um, so that all seemed to go quite well. So let's just bring you back out here for a bit of a wider view. Um, so let's go for a, a bigger drill size and we'll do that again. So this time the random drill diameter is 11.5. Put some uh, D in there. Let's call that Z0 this time. That one was moving X for some reason. Let's bring it back. There we go. Okay, so. Let's go again. So the feed's on. I'm not turning the hand wheel, the machine's doing this. So it does look like it's working harder on one side of the drill than the other. So I might need to adjust it slightly. So there we go. I hope that was uh, of use um, to anyone who's considering doing a similar thing with their machine as in using the, um, the carriage to perform drilling operations. Um, as I said, it really comes into its own with the solid tool post mount in conjunction with the DRO. And uh, it's very easy to wind this into the zero position. Um, as I said, I've got my tool post squared up nicely and it's really quite a solid and sturdy setup this is. Um, 
one observation through doing some hand drilling with the carriage here. Um, it, it is very quick and easy, um, but the diameter of the hand wheel on the MyFit is quite small. Um, and I must admit, I do find it an awkward sized hand wheel for a lathe. Uh, I know it's a small lathe, but um, one thing I'm considering doing is, um, is, is fitting a larger hand wheel um, to this anyway. Not just because I'm looking now to drill with the carriage. Most of the drilling I'll do with it in automatic feed. Um, but it, for me, I, f I think that the, the machine really needs a, a bigger diameter hand wheel. Um, so that, that might be one of my projects that's coming up. Um, but it does really remind me, um, it's kind of reminiscent of a, of a hard inch uh, capstan lathe that I used when I was an apprentice, which had the, the rotating turret. And, um, <clears throat> and I had on that machine a number of tools set up um, for different things, parting tools, uh, a little boring bar, outside diameter turning and chamfer tool, things like that. And it was really easy um, to index the, the, uh, the turret. And that's kind of why I like the multi-fix multi system so much because it's, um, for me, I just find it a really useful way to use a lathe. I really like it, really happy with it. Um, and, um, and of course you can, you know, there are other tool post designs available. Um, I just really like this one really happy with it so yeah i'm looking forward to getting some uh, proper jobs done on this now uh, and gain a bit more experience with the machine in this mode and um yeah hope that was of use and um thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next one bye for now